So I asked you guys on my Instagram what you wanted to see next, and I gave you options. It's just obvious that my following is a little, a little horny. They just, they want to know things. I gotta give the people what they want, so. Like I've stated before, Dossier provides amazing quality, good price, affordable scents for those who are looking to smell better, feel better, and for those who are on a budget and want to smell just as good as the regular stuff. Get you some Dossier. If it's not obvious by the title, we're gonna talk about part three of this series, which is getting better. <sighs> in the bedroom. The place where you can feel more confident in who you are and what you can provide for the person or people or whatever in this circumstance. As you can see, I, I got this brand new king bed with a new setup and I got this on purpose because not only do I want to be comfortable, but I want my guests to be comfortable as well. Sometimes you gotta put on a little movie. Sometimes you gotta light some incense. Sometimes you gotta light some candles. Sometimes you'd be like, hey, do you want a massage? If they're comfortable with that, if you're there in that part of your relationship, or if you want to tease and be like, I'm really good at giving massages, you're trying to find out. Sometimes it's not even about having a sexual conversation. Sometimes it's just about making them feel really comfortable in how much you're listening and how much you're engaged in the conversation and how much you really want to get to know somebody. But it's more about making them know that you know that you are interested and you're truly genuine about your interest. Being someone who looks like this and is having this whole scene and is dancer and all these things, a lot of people have their assumptions about my lifestyle and assumptions about how I want to do things with women but then when they really sit down with me and when they really get to know me and I really get to know them nine times out of ten I've noticed that women are really really comfortable with me because a lot of times I'm not just trying to get with you I'm not trying to get you here I'm trying to get you in here I'm a sapiosexual if you don't know what a sapiosexual is it is a mental attraction a mental state that you have to be in with someone in order for you to feel physical attraction in order for you to feel turned on and in order for you to feel wanting in having sexual relations with somebody. So when I express that and I'm really talking to women, I'm actually genuinely interested in them. I'm actually genuinely interested in their thoughts, their brain, how their mind works, where they've been in their life, what they're trying to do with their life, what their goals are, what their aspirations are. That stuff right there is a panty dropper. And I'm not just saying this to get you somewhere where you're just gonna get women sexually. At the end of the day, it's not about that. Especially with women, especially with queer women. It's vital to know that 90% of women require mental stimulation throughout, before, and after when it comes to this stuff. And as a woman myself, I can say that confidently and knowing that. Because if you're not trying to get to know me before we do anything like this, it's not happening, baby. And another thing about me is I like tea. This is random, but I really like tea the tea that you pour into a cup i really really enjoy loose leaf tea tea mixtures i have a whole setup in my place i'm just like a tea connoisseur nowadays and there's teas that can help you with getting women more comfortable getting them wetter getting them more turned on and that's just one skill in my little handbook that i like to pull out when i do stuff like this not on purpose it's more about I know what I like and I know that that is comforting to most women so I'm gonna utilize that so if you have a skill or if you have a, a talent especially when it comes to cooking if a girl likes to eat or if a girl likes to cook or whatever and you cook for her beforehand think about what you're good at think about things that you're interested in and utilize that treat them make them feel good and even if you're a guest in someone else's home what are ways that you can serve someone that's gonna make them feel like yeah like she's okay like you know okay but what's most important is not forcing things is not making things awkward not making things feel uncomfortable and making sure that you're not putting your intentions first not in an unhealthy way but in a way that makes sense and makes the person realize that like you actually care about them and that's really why i've been so successful in the bedroom i'm not just someone here to just do that and i'm not here to be used that way either and that brings me to why i believe that lesbian sex is top tier it really is like you guys can talk about all types of the stuff out here but that's why i truly believe and i say this in a lot of my videos that lesbian sex is the best of all 
because you have two very different but yet similar women who want to have an exchange with each other. It doesn't even matter what they look or how they identify. It's because they share the same parts, they have similar minds, they get the same things they've been through in the world and they understand each other's parts. And it just makes things so intimate and it makes women 10 times more comfortable to do more and to adventure more in order to take these relations to the next level. And if you know, you know. And if you don't know, I'm so sorry. But that's why we're making these videos to get you to a place of expertise. You can go into the world and you can feel confident even if it hasn't happened to you yet because you're like, I've watched Jake Killen's videos, I've watched Amber's Closet's videos, and I get it. Understanding how you are as a partner when it comes to the bedroom is really important and your skills in that. What do you like to do? For me, I know I really like touch. I really like to graze, I really like to play with hair, I really like to analyze a body, I like to kiss, I like to lick. I just like to appreciate the meal that is in front of me. If you're not that type of person, totally understand. Maybe you like to be the meal and to be appreciated. But from someone on this end, I'm gonna give you some tips real quick. Say we're laying out like this, right? And you're laying down right in front of me and we're just talking and it's cute. I might just, you know, first I might make a joke or maybe they're making jokes and they're pushing you. That's one of the main things girls love to do. They just push you. They're like, ha ha, or they put their hand on your leg or your shoulder and like, ha ha ha. And that's when you know sometimes, because sometimes women are just flirty. But most of the time, a lot of women like to do that. And that's giving you a little sign that they like to touch and they want to be touched. You know, sometimes you can point out something like, oh, I really like your tattoo and you touch it. I really like your tattoo. Tell me more about it. Do you have any other ones? Any hidden ones? If they don't have any tattoos, maybe you can be like, oh, is that a freckle? Is that a birthmark? That's showing women that not only are you paying attention, but you have attention to detail. And it's giving you also the opportunity to bridge the gap from haha to haha. And someone like myself definitely pays attention to body language. So I'm also doing this to see where you're sensitive parts are so some women might be ticklish tickling is great if they don't you know see it as a little threat or they really hate it hee <laughs> hee like and you're like oh my god stop that just gets them because they low-key love it finding out if they're ticklish finding out if they're sensitive women's bodies are a fucking playground and if you don't see women's bodies that way you are not doing it right i think honestly to bridge the gap into it if you have not done this with this person yet, you might have to, you know, ask for permission. You might have to ask for consent to kiss them or to do something a little bit more. Or if you're already comfortable with this person, but it's a little awkward or whatever, instead of kissing their mouth or the face or something, like just kiss somewhere on their body. Kiss their hand, kiss their, their leg, their stomach. You could even take it further and be like, have you ever had something eaten off of you? Say you brought in dessert, right? Like say it's dessert time. You just had that amazing dinner and you're like, oh, I got some chocolate covered strawberries. Oh, I got some whipped cream and, and whatever. And you be like, oops, and you get it on them. And then you're like, oh, I guess I got it. And then you lick it off. Then that's your chance to show off your skills. And nine times out of 10, women will drop their jaw if you're good at what you do. So I haven't talked about many details of different ways you can make those things a little bit more intense. Say you are involving objects. What are those objects you might ask? I would love to tell you. So there are so many things that I've involved in my sexual relations that have really spiced things up. Like I've talked about in my past videos, I'm a pleaser and I'm a entertainer obviously in my real life. So I like to put on a show. That's just fun for me. And especially if you're someone that likes to watch watch and likes shows, then they're gonna enjoy this. Sometimes I'll lay a woman out. Maybe you have a contraption in your bed, restraints their ankles and their hands. Maybe you have a contraption for their mouth that involves a ball. Maybe you have contraption for their eyes that involves them not being able to see. Bandanas, you can use a scarf, you can use whatever you have accessible to you. If you don't have a real paddle, you could use a spatula. As long as it's not like anything like metal or anything too intense. Maybe that might work too, as long as you don't go too hard. If they're into that, if they're into that. If you don't know what they're into, maybe you could have that conversation leading up to it because you're feeling spicy tonight and you want to have something a little bit more intense happen for you. So you can ask their history, you can ask about their fantasies, you can ask about all the things that they've always wanted to try. They just never had the opportunity to try. Now, the best way to get on top and get the blindfold on without be being awkward is either to have them sit on the bed and get behind them or to have them lay down, straddle them and then to lift it, lift their head and get it on behind them. Even if it is awkward, even if you are giggling, it's okay. If the person doesn't see that as okay or they're making it awkward, then that might not be the right one. I like to get a blindfold on, I like to get a tool. If I don't have a real 
whip or you know paddle I like to use a little spatula that I got in my kitchen a clean one and I like to have them lay out comfortably right this is where my pleaser self really starts to dive in and be overly excited is because now I have full control especially if you make rules so you put the blindfold on right you're like right near their ear you get into their ear and you're like what I want you to do is be completely still if you move or you try to touch me you try to take anything off we gotta start all over if you guys have a safe word make sure you have that established as well so as many tools as you want to have on deck make sure you grab those and have them ready Get different temperatures of tools to use or textures of tools to use so now we're here they're laid out and i like to just watch and i like to really study maybe i'll start with getting on top of them because they can hear and feel right maybe getting on top of them without touching them here's a really good tip for you guys bodies are really sensitive especially women's bodies and if you can get your lips really really close to their skin without kissing it without doing anything just like literally like grazing without even really touching and grazing their neck area their stomach their thighs and especially which we could take this to a whole nother level if you're into manifestations if you're into spirituality especially if you guys are both on the same page mentally you can really get to a place where you're breathing life into the person and that level right Right there is something that requires many many previous experiences with someone for you to really connect with this person without having to say any words without having to say any prior intentions and with you going into it knowing that the person's receiving your blessings through your energy that's gonna get them to feel a whole new level of connection with you intimacy and connection with themselves and energy that they might need or energy that you want to push into them and feed into them so say it's not really about that and you're just trying to turn them on that's cool you can still do that you can graze like i said you could either bring out the spatula as you're doing that and then all of a sudden like graze their leg while your your mouth is right near their neck and then you're grazing their leg with the tool and all of a sudden like whoa they get goosebumps they get oh my god depending on the level of how much they want to be dominated this shit right here works every single time because you're taking your time and taking your time is the biggest key because they don't know what to do especially with women who are anxious or have ADHD and they're just so like ah forcing them to slow down and to breathe and to feel everything you want them to feel is gonna drive them crazy but also turn them on a lot and warm them up to a point where by the time you actually get down there they are soaked. I like to use the edge of a, of a, of a spatula to kind of like graze, like a, almost like a pencil. And I'll make like shapes. I'm like sitting here like while they're blindfolded and I'm like, wow, this is so fun. It's so much fun to watch what parts of their body react. So sometimes if I'm on their stomach and they're sensitive, their legs might like shake a little bit. And that could give you more note on what body parts may are more sensitive for them. Even on their, their area up in here, I like to circle around it or I like to circle on the inner thigh then I might put it away for a second and just let it breathe. Literally just don't do nothing for maybe a minute or two or five minutes, however long you want to make them suffer because you go from a lot of stimulation to multiple types of stimulation to nothing. It literally makes me feel so alive and I know it makes the other person feel that way too. What I like to do in those moments when it's so sensual and so erotic is to like either with my hand either with a grab, either with a smack of the spatula or with the paddle or the whip, or whatever you have. And that's the best part because they don't know what the fuck to expect. So I've done things like that from anywhere from 10 minutes to a couple hours to recycling that within multiple sessions. You could take the blindfold off halfway through if you're feeling like this is not it and you want them to watch you. Keep it on and keep going to the point where you're giving them head or all of a sudden you have to strap on, whatever like you just as long as the person is consensual to all this like you can really just pull out whatever you want any stunt you feel but be confident in what you bring and what you're good at and following what your gut is telling you as far as what you're interested in and what you want to do if you are going with what you think they want or only what you want like you're overthinking as you're doing it that's what's gonna mess you up and that's what's gonna mess up the connection that you might have with someone or it might ruin things or it just might make things awkward or forced down the line energy doesn't lie you can't lie on what is really happening outside of your words, outside of your action. You have to be real. And if you're not being real, it's not going to work long term. And if that's not what you want, that's fine. Getting to that level of connection with somebody is the only goal and only thing I'm trying to reach when it comes to this stuff. So a lot of times in the past, I used to be so in here. And I used to be like, oh, is she liking this? Is she 
and she did oh her body did this oh, i don't know how i feel oh my leg cramp like when you really get outside of that and you just take a second you breathe you sometimes just let them take some action you let them take some initiative you get to this flow state like in meditation where you start to feel like there's no thought there's just action there's just feeling that's when you get to another level as well with this stuff and that shit right there is bliss especially when both of you are that way you're manifesting a whole new level of connection with one another and it'll give you a new perspective on life it'll give you a newfound sense of energy within yourself it is crazy okay so now we're in it right we're now we're in the bedroom we're doing it we're, we're doing the things and <laughs> now i got you really turned on I'm exactly where i want you there's other tools you can bring into the mix as well i might be kissing i might be licking i might be spitting whipped cream chocolate syrup edible blue things that make sense in this situation also hot wax uh for the body body wax if you know what you're doing and you know that they're cool with that if you have never tried ice cubes down there while you're eating it out try it especially if they're into it have the ice cube in your mouth first or you could trace it on their body but what i've noticed is it works better when it's already in your mouth and it's kind of warm already and you're just kind of sucking on it and then you have it like in, a, in your cheek like a uh, like a chipmunk or something and you kind of pull it out to give them a little shock and then you put it back or you put it with your tongue and you're using your tongue to graze with it oh boy food is really cool because you can utilize that as a way to show off your skills you can also put it on your finger make them lick it off your finger you can put it on your finger and watch them you lick it off your own put it on their finger and lick it off their own finger and take their hand and you know show them you can take your time take your time the power of slowing things down so impactful because if you're able to control your body in a slower state it actually does a lot more damage than if you were to go fast nine times out of ten and especially if you go slow steady and powerful oh uh, we've talked about this in my past videos so i don't really have to say much about this portion and giving that but like i talked about earlier with grazing and using your hands it is extra important to do that before and utilize your hands the most when it comes to your oral pleasures because a lot of us will just do that and then not think about where our hands are at or what we're doing with our hands say in the circumstance we were talking about where i just took the blindfold off right and now you have to look at me now i'm gonna have you watch me graze my hand on parts of yourself that i really enjoy so if i'm trying to get my hand down there i won't just grab i won't just go down there say i'm already here touching here especially if they enjoy this stimulation playing with these if they like it but really like grabbing it scooping it both at the same time utilizing the power of the grab and scooping under it making a part feel bigger than it is like i've talked about before if you get under there you pull it up and then you lift it to yourself and then you have control of moving it around your mouth you have control of kind of pushing it in different directions and making it feel juicier thicker voluptuous kiss those parts the skin around so i'm talking about here and down there as well and any other part that you're around if you're around here too kissing some ass before you get to the groceries is extra important so say i'm down there with my hands it's the same concept as kissing and using your mouth the inside of the thigh is so sensitive for most women like i talked about earlier soft to hard to fast to grabbing you know really like giving a good grab in there grabbing outside of here too and pulling them this way and then there's the skin outside of the outside lips so i'll like use that skin first and sometimes i'll just you know feel that I might make a circle with one finger around the entire thing. Maybe I'll go on to the part with one finger and then I'll just go all the way up, maybe all the way down. Maybe I'll start to use two fingers. Maybe I'll start to use my whole hand. Maybe I'll go from circles to just straight up and down. If you know that they're turned on more when you pull up or if they pull down, I know for myself, I'm more of a upper. If you pull up on me, if there's something with a lot of surface area that's pulling up it just really does something to me so sometimes people are both you know you never know say you don't even know what it is for them maybe you can get even extra sensual if you're like let me watch you touch yourself let me just sit here and watch 
that usually takes a level of comfort that most women aren't comfortable with but if you can do that before you actually get into it not only will it turn both of you on but then you can see what they actually enjoy different patterns different amounts of fingers different parts of your hand i can also use the whole part of my hand and kind of cup it and pull either direction or even in circles with the whole part of your hand which is grabbing the whole entire surface area of that part then there's like the button the button usually you could do one finger two finger three fingers whatever and you can be like soft Softer on that which is like the top half and then there's the bottom half so like say you already got them to a couple warm-ups and stuff so now they're wet now you can start to utilize that and you honestly should not even be moving your hand on this part unless they are wet either you got to warm them up better or you got to start making it wet somehow so you can lick your hand and you can do it in there you can have them lick your hand and go down there or you could spit you could spit on just straight on and if you know how to do that here's me being really real with you guys i did not even know how to spit properly until i was like that's a thing for people like i was like oh shit so after a while i was like i don't spit very well so after i would brush my teeth i would practice instead of just like spitting i would let it come out but you have to like formulate your lips a certain way and you also have to like form it in your mouth a certain way in order for it to just like drip out which is the effect that you want and most women will be turned on by that if you have good aim show them what you're doing so say they are really wet and now you're in there so you can go from the button to the hole if you're at the hole area pulling down usually works best especially if you're trying to insert like pulling all the skin down and then inserting because if you just go straight into it sometimes it hurts sometimes it's weird sometimes it's awkward sometimes you miss it's like very smooth and it's a very good way to get in there i don't even usually go in there at first sometimes i'm just feeling and then I'm creating a suction. It's almost like a sucking feeling and you're giving pleasure without even inserting. And if they're extra wet, you're gonna hear some stuff. A lot of times when women hear themselves or you hear some stuff, more sense is involved here and it just gets things even juicier. One thing I've noticed what works really well, like if they actually enjoy being inserted into doing that and then I kind of like push and I put some I put some weight into it, but then I let it insert just a little bit. And if they have good Kegels and if they have good control of themselves, they will suck you in. And that for them feels so good and it feels so good for you because you didn't have to force anything. A little bit of a side note, I like to interview people at our events called Taste DNT, and that is women only events here in LA. And what I do is I'll talk to them, especially sometimes sexual questions. One time we were on a yacht and I asked them, how many times have you gotten someone there in one session? Average answer was about five to 10 which to me is very low. As a pleaser, it makes sense and it's very prominent to me that that person is getting there every couple of minutes, unless it's not my turn. And sometimes I require it even if it is my turn because I'm the type where if you're not getting there and you're trying to please me too much, I'm not gonna get nowhere. But if we're pleasing each other together, but that's when it really impacts me the most. So even if you're distracted or whatever, I'm gonna pull you in and be like, no, look at me. And that is one thing that we don't talk about enough, which is eye contact during it. I want you to look at me. Not just look at me, but look through me. And I want to look through your soul. Because if I have your eye contact, that's it. Because my eyes say a lot, and I know yours do too. And if I don't have your real attention, a lot of women can get really distracted in the head. If you're not feeling me, I'm going to make you feel it by saying, look at me. Watch me, eyes on me. That shit right there will do wonders. Because a lot of times women who are especially used to heteronormative sex, they are used to being kind of like, whatever, they have to fake it a lot. They have to like kind of force themselves to get there. But when you're with a woman who really wants you to be here with them, they will make you focus up and get in your head. And if you have that control over somebody and you're really here with somebody, Eye contact does all the work because you're showing them, hey, you feel what I'm doing to you right now? Feel that shit. Understand that I'm doing this shit with intention and passion and that mental stimulation and concentration and focus and intention will get them soaked and get them there instantly. When I asked that question, people were surprised when I said like 20 to 30 
plus times. I mean, that was like the most in one session. That was over a long time, but you're getting the person to get there every couple of minutes because that's the goal. I want you to feel this in every position and that's the goal in every position. Even if I'm being pleasured, I still want you to feel some type of pleasure and get there somehow. So say I am being pleasured and I'm getting hit and I want you to get there too with me. Sometimes I'll be extra with my moaning and it's not to be extra, it's just to be more intentional with the fact that I'm feeling so pleased and I want you to feel how much I'm being pleased by your actions that I want you to get there with me. So let's switch it up even more. Say we're into it and it's time for... The reason I really, really like the harness is because when you're in different positions, as much as boxers have you know, different holes you could put the thing in, harnesses can literally have you adjust from top and bottom. So like say we go from doggy to you being on top, it's like I gotta position it from it being kind of straightforward to it being kind of here. So instead of it being, so instead of it being straight on here, it's gotta be kind of like this when I'm laying down. Your angle of your body is this way, and it's only gonna stay in and feel good if it's like this. And that is next level game. If you know, you know. That's another reason why I like using the harness. Also, it keeps it really locked on to myself and my part because if it's not all the way locked on and there's a little bit of space there or fabric is there, whatever, like it's just not making me feel connected enough to know that I'm like feeling every single thrust, I'm feeling every single motion and I'm feeling that energy because it's really a mental thing. People think it's like there's actually, there's physical stuff, but it's really a mental thing and that's why it turns us on so much because we can really feel it, feel connected to it and it feels attached, like really strongly attached to us. And also kind of just being as naked as possible is important because I really like feeling like we got down to it, we're really in it and I'm not so restricted or I'm not ruining clothes with padding on it like after I get there a few times because I'll ruin some stuff if I'm really into it and I'd rather having something I can just wash off and put away than having to put in the laundry every single time. But to each their own, I do not shame nobody for what they prefer, but that is just my game. Coconut oil or water-free lube is important to utilize because if it is not wet or that person is not wet and trying to get in there is just disaster. It does not feel good for both parts. It should just slide in. Not to say that you should just let it slide in. Sometimes you should really like hold it and warm it up because if you have the type that needs to be warmed up to get less hard, that's a real thing sitting there getting it warm and then I'm using my other hand to play my voice or I'm using something else to kind of distract from what's happening go down and then in a little bit pull it back out down and pull it back out pull it back in a little bit more and then eventually you can start to fully get in there and you fully start to hit them strokes hit them strokes is something that we could talk about a little bit in this video. I'm not gonna give you everything. Hips are so important. Flexibility in your hips is so important. So men usually just hit it. Men usually just hit it so straight on. You know what I'm saying? They just, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Honestly, that's like the key for when it's really, we're at pound town, like we're going hard, right? So, <laughs> I can't believe I did this. It's like a, I'm spreading my knees. I'm pushing down forward pulling my knees together to pull out. So it's almost like a circle, you know what I'm saying? And it's not about my body using your glute to push, pulling your knees together. That engages this muscle in your butt, pulling it up, pulling it out. If you're good at twerking, you're gonna be extra good at this. And that's why honestly, sometimes femmes are a little bit more superior when it comes to this because they know how to isolate them hips really well. A lot of us masks don't know how to do that. And that's why I'm here, baby, listen to me. Isolate your hips, do different motions with your hips. And then there's there's the position on your knees, there's a the position on your hands, there's a the position on one knee, there's the position standing, obviously, there's a the position sideways, you can do it like this, you can have the leg up, just, you know, and obviously laying down. But if you're laying down, a lot of us do this, right? Our whole body. It's just not cute. It's not cute to look at. Your knees are braced. You can be on your hands, you can be on your elbows, you can be laying. Toot your butt up a little bit. I know it might feel a little feminine, but then spread your knees and get in there. Again, knees up, pull back out. Bow. Same with laying down. Say she's on top, right? You don't want to just hit straight up. Again, if we're a pound town, that's fine. But if we're hitting it and you got a good grip here, again, push forward, push your knees in and drop. So your knees are helping. Why this shit matters? You're giving them a stroke. You're not giving them a pounding, you're giving them a stroke. Same concept as this when you're inside with your finger, right? If I were to just do this. It's not as good as when you're, you give it a rhythm, you give it a directive motion, you give it intention, 
you give it a good stroke because the entire part is sensitive and there's there's different areas that obviously are more sensitive but if you're going down up back you're literally hitting the entire canal instead of just straight in straight out and if you don't have good hip strength time to get that shit up in the gym baby long story short don't be afraid to use different positions experiment don't be afraid to ask questions on what they like don't be afraid to use your eyes use your all parts of your body ways of turning people on is so various and so vast and there's not one wrong way or one right way and most of the time for most women there are thousands of ways even if you think you've gotten them down there's still so many other ways you can experiment and if you don't have a partner that is not into something that you're into or or shames you for your fantasies or shames you for wanting certain things or forces you to do anything you're uncomfortable with that is not okay and that is not the right one a lot of times when we're growing into this life of being more sexual and more open with that and say we are low-key about that life like i was in the past but i was afraid to ask for a lot of things or afraid to see how good it can get i would settle and i would do a lot of not speaking up for myself say they're down there and they're doing something that's like eh Instead of just like trying to be uncomfortable and like to show them in your body language, use your voice. So be very real with what you want in this world and you're gonna get it. Every single one of your fantasies can come true if you really, really put your energy and manifestation and power and word and belief into it. I'm saying that from firsthand experience. I know there's so much more we could talk about, but this is already so long and I don't want to give away all my things because literally then I'll have nothing left for you guys, but I hope this one helped. I did a lot for this one and you're welcome. I love y'all. Peace.